Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today record is I'm in, in the Ogre. So let's get started. Amin and the Ogre. Once upon a time and very long ago, there was a young man called Amin who traveled out from the city of Isahan in Persia. He was trying to find work, but was so poor, he had only two things to bring on his journey, an egg and a lump of salt. So he walked along with these in his pocket, talking to himself. Well, an egg and a lump of salt are better than nothing. But I wish I had a sword or dagger to defend myself. They say robbers and worse roam these roads at night. And I am a small man, not very strong at that. But on he went until the road he was on ended. And then he found himself crossing a wide and stony plain. Just as the dusk was turning to dark, poor young Amin saw a huge, hulking figure approaching him. As the thing came nearer, the ground beneath Amin's feet trembled. Oh, no! It's an ogre! What an ugly brute! Why, he's tall as a tree and just as green. And he looks so mean, even for a dean. I'm in big trouble. No place to hide, not a bush or boulder. There's nothing to do but walk straight for him and act as bold as I can. So, I'm in up to the ogre and said, And where do you think you're going, you squishy little thing? You're not going anywhere, are you? Well, to tell the truth, I'm so strong that I thought I should go out into the world and see if I could find an ogre who is as strong as I am. So far, I haven't been able to find one. No, oh, are you kidding? You don't look very strong. Maybe not, but you don't look so large to me. Not for an ogre. Why, I've, I've met ones twice your size and uglier. Oh, hush, Pickles, I'm the biggest in the land, and so ugly am I that monsters and men alike have fainted at the sight of me. Then let's see which of us is the stronger. Agreed? Agreed! So Amen stooped down and picked up a round white stone and began to shake it hard, close to his ear. Mmm, there's liquid in this stone. I can hear it. Take it in that big hand of yours and try to crush it, so that we may see what's inside. And he tossed the stone to the ogre. While the ogre was doing his best to crush the stone, Amin secretly took the egg out of his pocket. The ogre was red in the face from squeezing so hard. I can't crush it, so nobody can. Here, you try it. And he threw the stone down to Amin. Okay. I've got it. There. See the liquid trickling through my fingers? The stone had a yellow liquid in it. I've won. You want to try again? Yes, and you won't win this easily this time. Once more, Armin stooped down and scooped up another stone. Although it was too dark to really see, he pretended to study the stone carefully. Mm. This one's full of salt. Just crush it between your fingers, you'll see. Once more, the ogre tried as hard as he could, but he couldn't crush this stone either. <clears throat> While he was trying, Amin quietly took the lump of salt out of his pocket and hid it in his hand. Then, red-faced and ashamed, the ogre tossed the stone back to Amin. In a second, Amin had crushed his lump of salt against it. <sighs> you can't seem to do anything today. See, I've crumbled it to salt with very little effort. I don't believe you got salt in your hand. Let me taste it. <clears throat> well, all right, so it tastes like salt. You do seem to be strong after all. But it's impossible to judge anything in this light. Come along to my cave tonight and share supper with me. 
In the morning, we'll match our strengths again. Amen did not want to go with the ogre, but he knew that if he ran, a large creature would easily catch him. So he told the ogre that he gratefully accepted his generous invitation, and off they went. It was a long way they walked, with Amin running to keep up with the huge ogre's long strides. But at last they came to the end of the plain and to some high cliffs. The ogre had his cave in these cliffs. As soon as they were inside, the ogre started a fire and warmed his hands. Then he pointed to an enormous water bag made of the hides of seven oxen. I have to get some more wood for the fire. While I'm gone, fill this bag with water so I can cook rice. There's a little stream at the back of the cave. With that, the ogre walked away, leaving Amin with a huge leather bag which he couldn't even lift while it was still empty. Amin dragged the bag to the back of the cave until he could see a small waterfall coming down through the rocks. Instead of filling the bag, he began piling earth beside the puddle of water that lay on the ground. his heavy footsteps approaching, but he never looked up. Why haven't you filled the bag? Mm, I'm doing something much more important. I'm building you a canal. Oh, it's the least I can do to repay your hospitality. When I'm done with the canal, water will flow to the front of your cave, and there I'll build a little dam with a sluice gate you can open and close as you like. So whenever you want water for cooking, you won't have to carry and fill that water bag again. Ah, oh, poo! What care have I for such fanciness when I want my supper now? Grabbed hold of the water bag and filled it with water, lifting it onto his shoulder as though it weighed no more than a cat. Come on! I'm hungry! You can finish your canal tomorrow. Now we eat, and then we sleep. While they were eating, Amen made up stories about how strong he was. But the ogre didn't know whether to believe him or not. So the ogre decided to kill Amen before the sun rose again, rather than face him in the light. When they had both lain down for the night, Amen pretended to fall asleep at once, but really he was listening carefully to the sounds the ogre was making. Finally, he heard the ogre begin to snore. Amin crept out of his bed, found the big sack of rice out of which the ogre had taken their supper. The bag was more than half full. Amin dragged the sack to his bed, threw the blankets over it, and then hid. Just as dawn was breaking, the ogre awoke and grabbed a cane as big as a log. He crawled over to Amin's bed, raised the cane, and brought it down as hard as he could. Then he hit down again and again. Seven times the ogre struck the sack of rice which he believed to be Amin. Contented with his evil work, the ogre yawned and went back to his own sleeping place. As soon as the ogre had gone to sleep again, Amin came out of his hiding place, pulled away the sack of rice, and went back to bed. When an hour had passed, Amin sat up and said to the ogre, Um... Uh, Sorry to disturb you, dear ogre, but there appears to be some sort of tiny insect banging and bumping about in your cave. Uh, what? Whoa, it was a strange insect, let me tell you. It gave me seven little taps, each lighter than the last, it seemed, as though it wished to gently awaken me. What sort of insect is that? Ogre jumped out of bed and rushed out of the cave and away. Amin knew he would return. Frightened because he had no weapon, the young man searched the cave. There he found a rusty looking rifle, four bullets, and some powder. This must be the oldest rifle in the world. 
Well, at least the powder's dry. But these bullets won't even dent that ogre's thick hide. Well, I can try. That's him coming now. And he's got a big club in his hand. And there's a fox by his side. That clever fox will have told him the truth about me. I'll be lucky if he fells me with one blow. Now, wait a minute. I bet I could shoot the fox with this gun. Take that, cursed beast. And that, for not following my orders. Amin was careful to shoot over the head of the fox, giving the creature a chance to run away. Who cares if I missed? I'll catch him later. Uh, what was that about? Oh, that dumb fox. I told him to bring me seven ogres. That's how many I promised to bring back to the Shah. And what does he bring me? You. What good are you? You're mine already. Well, when the ogre heard these words and saw how Amin had treated the fox, he became very frightened. And when an ogre becomes frightened, he starts running and doesn't stop until he's reached the sea. So away he rushed, stumbling and kicking over boulders as he went, and soon he was far away. <laughs> He'll never return. Once he stops running, he won't be able to find his way back. Amin turned around and went back into the cave to search it. He knew that for years and years, the ogre had been robbing all the travelers he met on the plain. Amin searched the cave and could find nothing. Finally, he thought to look behind the waterfall. There he found a small hole, which he squeezed through into still another cave. This one much larger and stuffed with treasure. From all the wealth in the cave, Amun picked seven precious stones, each more beautiful than the next, and carried them away. These stones were worth so much that Amun was rich for all the rest of his days. So that was Amin and the Ogre. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. And we have another video coming out real soon.